plot Leckert by 2 y by l into 1 minus y by l that is what we have. Now, if you plot, plot uh, y by l as the abs, uh, coordinate t minus t naught by t 1 minus t naught as the abscissa, plant leckert becomes a parameter. So, if you plant leckert equal to 0 means there is no velocity of the plate. So, it is a static uh, thing and then the uh, heat transfer process is purely conduction and please at this point assume t 1 greater than t 0 for our discussion purposes t 1 greater than t 0. So, you will find when you plot this um, uh, when Prantle, Eckert equal to, Prantle is the fluid, Eckert equal to 0, there is heat transfer from top plate to the bottom plate because T 1 is higher than T naught that you can easily make out. That profile will tell you. Now, as you now put in some value for Prantle Eckert starting greater than 0, 0 0.51, 1.52, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. something interesting is happening. That is why I take up this problem, I will just do my bit and go. At Prantle Eckert equal to, to 2, rather I would say if Prantle Eckert greater than 2, there is something very imp, uh, interesting happening to the temperature profile. Now, when you draw this temperature profile, you will take the abscissa as theta from 0 to 1 and of course, y by l 0 to 1. So, one would uh, like to think that all the profiles would be within this uh, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 thing, but when you go beyond Prantle Eckert equal to 2, suddenly you will see the pro temperature profile extending outside theta equal to 1, number 1. Number 2, not only that, when we say the top plate is at T 1, you know what it means, it is held at T 1, it is artificially deliberately held. So, if there is some heat transfer into that, you are taking away that heat to hold it, that is what it means, it would not go beyond that. So, T 1 is held constant, the temperature profile is extended beyond 1 that means, the temperature there is now higher than the temperature of the plate T 1. What it means is, although you are holding the temperature T 1 greater than T 0, you are holding it at certain plant leckert number mean at certain U 1 U 1 value, the profile extends temperature profile extends beyond the theta 1, but you have to bring that profile back to that one point. Now, you see the gradient has changed its direction. Originally, the gradient was like this for Prandtl Eckert equal to 0. Gradually, when you increase the Prandtl Eckert, it become at 2, it became vertical at y equal to L. And when you went beyond Prandtl Eckert equal to, to 2, the profile is changing. That means, the direction of the heat flow is changing. So, what does, what does it mean? Although you are holding T 1 and T 2 constant deliberately, T 1 being greater than T naught, at a value of plant Leckert equal to just beyond 2, heat has now started flowing into the top plate rather than from the top plate to the fluid. That means, there is a heat reversal has happened, heat flow reversal has happened. This is something now which is coming out because uh, coming out of our coolant flow because we took the viscous dissipation term into consideration du by dy whole square. We did not neglect it. We said, yeah, du by d u by d y may be important. D by d x we neglected. D by d z we all those we neglected. When we have taken a situation, the problem where d u by d y was fi is finite and uh, it should be considered. You find now a beyond a certain value of u one, heat is started flowing into the upper plate. Question or not? This only if you plot you will understand. Then you think what is happening to the physics of the problem. Now, the answer is that somehow this increasing velocity, increasing a cut number, increasing velocity has created, has generated heat in the system. That heat has caused the fluid temperature to rise. That rise in fluid temperature beyond the T 1 value is what is the cause of heat transfer into the T 1. Therefore, increasing velocities are finally, the root of uh, this, this phenomenon of heat generation within the fluid and therefore, heat transfer to the top plate. This is happening, this phenomenon of heat generation within the flow because of u 1 is viscous dissipation. Actually, it is viscous heat dissipation, viscous uh, energy dissipation. 
Now, this viscous dissipator is not simply kinetic energy, it is not simply u 1 square, it is actually mu. If you look at the energy term, energy equation, mu d u by d y whole square, mu is always present. So, it is a combination of the viscosity and the velocity gradient. So, it depends upon what are the values of these two. Mu can be extremely high, d u by d y can be very small, viscous dissipation is important. When is mu very high? For oils. So, when there is an oil involved, even small d u by d y can generate enough viscous uh, uh, dissipation. On the other hand, if you go to low viscosity fluids, typically air is extremely small, but <clears throat> even under those conditions, if d u by d y is very large, mu into d u by d y whole squared will be considerable. So, for low viscosity fluids, high velocity gradients will cause viscous, I mean there is heat generation and therefore, heat transfer. For high viscosity fluids, even small gradients will lead to the same effect. I am trying to make an important point here. It is not simply viscosity that counts, it is not simply the velocity gradient, it is a combination of these two which brings in a very important physical phenomenon into the system where heat is being generated. When heat is generated, it has to escape somewhere. It tries to go to, towards the plates and that can happen only when the temperature of the fluid itself is very high, higher than these two plates. That is what you see when you plot these temperature profiles, you can go up to 4, 6 and 8 even time. So, viscous heat generation has now caused heat flow reversal at the top wall number 1. If there is a heat, uh, the temperature profile reversal, there should be a maximum for that profile. Please find out what the maximum temperature is. This is all a case T 1 greater than T naught only we are talking about. What is the maximum temperature and at what location it occurs, please find out. Now, this is purely by plotting the profiles you can make out. How else can you find out that uh, there is a dt by dy equal to 0 at the top wall, please look at the file. Can you find out by an analysis uh, what is the value of plant Leckhardt equal to 2? If you plot it, you will know that, but derive an expression for the value of plant Leckhardt equal to 2 when d d by d y is 0 at the wall, that is when the change of direction takes place. So, you have the temperature profile, temperature profile is there t y, differentiate that d t by d y, at y equal to l you put 0 and obtain plant Leckhardt equal to 2, that is what I am telling you to do. You can get it through the profile if you plot, which you have not plotted, but at least analytically find out from the t equation at what value of plant Leckhardt is d t by d y equal to 0, 3 or 4 steps, please obtain plant Leckhardt equal to, to, to 2 as this critical number beyond which heat gets transferred into the top wall, although t 1 is greater than t 0. We emphasize this point simply because there is a mindset amongst all of us generally that as long as t 1 is greater than t 0, it should always flow, the heat should always flow from t 1 to t 0. But what this problem tells you is, no that is not right, your mindset is not right. There is what is called as a viscous dissipation that is possible. It is possible for low viscosity fluids at high velocity gradients and high viscosity fluids at low velocity gradients. Heat is generated because of this viscous shear, that shear force which is depends upon the kinetic energy is converted into heat. That heat is now trying to escape. The, if the temperature of the fluid goes beyond the T 1 temperature of the top plate, there is heat transfer into the T 1. Do not always look at the physical model and say T 1, I mean tem, uh, heat transfer will be always from T 1 to T naught, that is what it says. This is the effect of viscous dissipation, importance of mu and uh, d u by d y. Always look at mu d u by d y, not mu alone, but d u by d y alone. Please obtain that as partly equal to 2. Plant Leckhardt equal to 2. Also, where does the y maximum occur? T maximum occur, this is again d t by d y at e, e, 0, you have to find out where d t by d y becomes 0. And please obtain this, I am not really not going to write anything on the board, I am a little unhappy with uh, nothing being done by you, you are all intelligent people, please do this yourself, I will give you the final y max, this is where the t max occurs in this case of T 1 greater than T 0. So, take the temperature equation, differentiate it d t by d y and find out where this is equal to 0, that is the maximum point. Please obtain this following expression, 
y maximum is equal to I am going to dictate note down if you are interested y maximum is equal to k by mu u 1 squared again and again this mu u 1 squared k combination comes in all this problem mu 1 squared by 2 k k 2 k l mu u 1 squared you can look at the term mu viscosity u 1 squared kinetic energy y max equal to k by mu u 1 squared into t 1 minus t naught is the imposed te temperature difference plus uh, why is this half plus half not plus half it should be plus uh, l by 2 y max equal to k by mu 1 square into t 1 minus t naught plus l by 2 I think l you should get and one thing we can check here if t 1 equal to t naught equal temperatures where will the maximum occur. So, check that here from this expression if t 1 equal to t naught y maximum will be l by 2 and find out what that temperature is. Okay, do that. Now, I will ask a question if T 1 equal to T naught T equal, equal temperatures occurred equal to 0 there is no heat transfer at all it is the entire fluid body is a T naught uh, whatever equal temperature let us say T naught T naught. The moment you introduce the plate velocity and depending upon that now heat transfer comes into picture a non heat transfer problem an adiabatic problem you are converting into it, it is converting itself into a heat transfer problem simply because of the imposed uh, flow that you have created you have not used any pump an imposed flow because of the movement of the plate that you have imposed actually. So, now there is a viscous generation that heats up the fluid only thing is it is doing it symmetrically because both the plates are at the same temperature the heat that is generated has to go in these two directions you will find a nice symmetric temperature profile y equal to 0 t equal to t naught y equal to l also t equal to t naught you can call it or t l, but both of them are equal and there is a parabolic temperature profile with a maximum at l by 2 find out what that maximum in uh, I have asked you to do this also for oils you will find this temperatures could be very high for air it does not matter, but this is taken um, for our uh, lubrication problems t max is the most important physically significant thing coming to us from coed flow. <coughs> in the case of lubrication films what would be the temperature of the oil film <coughs> that you will attain at various u 1 why is it important higher the temperature for liquids what happens to the viscosity for liquids will it increase or decrease for higher temperature decrease that will destroy the lubrication characteristic of that particular thing. So, we want to keep the maximum temperature is within a certain limit therefore, this uh, this comes in. So, you will find by looking at physical situations you should be able to formulate your own problem when you look at a heat transfer problem you should be able to identify whether it is conduction, convection, radiation what are therefore, the important parameters coming into picture what is the physical model all that you have to do it is not simply that this is given as something very specific what it tells you what you should understand is you look at the heat transfer situation think about it write down the physical model and find out what are the parameters find out how heat is transferred and what variables control the heat transfer. Now, uh, I have also asked you to look at to calculate heat transfer at the lower wall both lower wall and upper wall you have the temperature profile. Okay. How do you write down a small expression for heat transfer at the lower wall how do you ra rather calculate it from the temperature profile how, how q w equal to minus k at have you done that y equal to 0. Now, can you tell me therefore, what is the final expression for q at y equal to 0 this is very important after all temperature differences are there thermal conductivity is there L is there this I will give you 3 minutes to do this please. I will just give you a hint q w or whatever is equal to k by l into give me what is there in the brackets k by l 
it should be of the order of k dt by dx. So, k by L you take give me what you get in the brackets in terms of uh, Prandtl number. Q at the bottom wall equal to k by L multiply by <coughs> something in the brackets <coughs> in terms of Prandtl number. Yeah, tell me k by l I have taken it outside the bracket in the brackets you tell me ah. mm, further simplify it here there is no more l if I you have taken l outside the bracket there will be no more l k by l has come out multi give me the thing in the bracket yeah anybody else what, what is it Okay, okay. Uh, there are several ways of uh, how you can put it. Can you please do this? See whether you can put it in this form. Can you tell me here now what I can write? Huh? Then this is a simple conduction equation as you can see k by l t naught minus t 1. Please see whether you can get this into this form. Slight manipulation. k by l you got it? Anybody has got it? K by L. Now, I hope you have got it. Now, look at this expression. This is the Q at the bottom wall. So, there is usually one would think K by L into T naught minus T 1, but now we know that is possible only when a cut number equal to 0. So, fine. And if T 1 is greater than T naught, you will get a that directions you will get, you know, you minus and all that. But you see from this expression, the driving temperature difference when viscous dissipation exists is not simply T naught minus T 1, but it is T naught minus you take this together T 1 plus Prandtl U 1 square by 2 C p. Look at Prandtl U 1 square by 2 C p. obviously, the units of that term must be temperature, it has to be temperature. So, this is the heat flow at the bottom wall, mark it, leave it, we will go to the next step, we will come back to this equation later. So, when T 1 is greater than T 0, both the plates are at some temperature control, the heat flow at the bottom wall equal is equal to K by L into T naught minus bracket T 1 plus Prandtl U 1 square zero. leave it at that. Now, take up the next problem. Now, you have a quiet flow, you have done this, hopefully you have done this in your exam. You have a quiet flow, the bottom plate is insulated. Get me get me the temperature of the bottom wall. The insulated wall, it has a some, some temperature there is some temperature attained by the insulated wall. What is that temperature? Again go to the same temperature equation is the same that this now another thing you will learn here is temperature equation is the same different boundary conditions T 1 greater than T 0, T 1 equal to T 0, T 0 greater than T 1, d t by d y 0 at wall all these give, will give you different information and of course, answers, but more than that information that you can cull out of it. One, we have now seen that viscous dissipation is important beyond a certain Prandtl cut and it has a tendency to make the heat reverse even though the temperature is high, we have said that. Now, heat transfer at the bottom wall, you get you got it as k by L into T naught minus of T 1 plus Prandtl 1 square by 2 C p, keep it aside. Take a new case, 
where the same quiet flow bottom flow uh, bottom uh, plate is insulated. Get me a simple expression for the temperature of the bottom wall. y equal to 0 dt by dy is 0 y equal to l t equal to t 1 same thing. <coughs> the two boundary conditions two constants get me the temperature for the bottom wall which is actually dt by dy at y equal to 0. A very simple expression. You got it? Tell me T at y equal to 0 is what? Yeah. Can you give it in terms of Prandtl number? Yes little man whenever you find mu and k you put a C p there make it into Prandtl divide the other thing by multiply divide by C p. This, this is okay no problem with this it is permitted. That, that's why it should be easier for them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The temperature profile y equal to 0, dt by dy is 0, y equal to L, t equal to t1. Tell me if you have completed, if you have made a mistake, it does not matter. Tell me. This is okay. Uh, tell me now, any, any one of you know. Start with the temperature term here. Uh, T 1 plus frontal. Not rho. Now, what is the problem you have taken? Quiet flow with y equal to 0, dt by dy equal to 0. When I say dt by dy equal to 0, uh, what is, can you use a, um, a word uh, to, to describe uh, that surface? It is a, dt by dy equal to 0 means what? It is a huh? adiabatic it is an insulated surface, it is an adiabatic surface. That means, the temperature T y equal to what you have got is actually T adiabatic wall or T ad whatever. So, in an insulated condition, you have now the temperature. Now, and please see, it is always higher than T 1. We did not specify the temperature as T 0, we specified an insulated boundary condition. Then, when you got it actually, in terms of the other variables, you found the uh, at y equal to 0, which we now call the adiabatic wall temperature, not the adiabatic temperature, adiabatic wall temperature or insulated wall temperature. You found T 1 plus something, which depends upon U 1, of course, the fluid also, very important. Huh? Leave it. Now, go to the previous case, where you found the heat transfer at the bottom wall. Look at that. 
heat transfer at the bottom wall q w equal to k by l multiplied by t naught minus you are getting this, but that was not adiabatic wall that was t y equal to 0 t equal to t 0. So, for the case of a non adiabatic situation here yeah. So, actually what now I can write I can actually write it as adiabatic for the non adiabatic case I can still invoke the adiabatic wall temperature concept now although it is not adiabatic I am communicating here the T 1 not equal to T naught case is not adiabatic, but when you calculate the rate of heat transfer at the bottom wall you are getting a combination of parameters which happen to be give you the adiabatic wall temperature. How do I know it is adiabatic wall temperature that is what you did just, just now putting d t by d y at y equal to 0 equal to 0 you said the temperature that is attained by the insulated wall is this, but this happens to be the same as this. That means ladies and gentlemen even in a non insulating or non adiabatic wall condition. Now, what is this? This is the equation for heat transfer. The driving force driving temperature difference is not simply the imposed T naught minus T 1, but it is a imaginary temperature difference the driving potential which has now adiabatic wall temperature into it. If you say sir there is no adiabatic wall, yes there is no adiabatic wall. So, this is a concept of the adiabatic wall is coming into the non adiabatic thing meaning the first thing that now <coughs> when you when we got this expression we did not use the term anywhere that is a high velocity flow we have not used it we did not say it is high velocity flow we said we went on saying Prandtl occurred what is the value of Prandtl occurred meaning the effect of the Prandtl number and the velocity is coming into picture we simply did not say high velocity flow because you have done high velocity flow in forced conversion high velocity flow you said u by d y occurred number you said. Now, I did not say high velocity I simply said we will take mu by k du by d y whole square into consideration let us see what happens. Now, in that situation the actual analysis is telling me the heat transfer at the lower wall for a certain Prandtl number for a certain du by d y is not simply k by l into t naught minus t 1, but it is k by l into t naught minus a new temperature which is t 1 plus Prandtl u 1 square by 2 C p. Then you find it is adiabatic. So, what it means is in all such situations and it is true for normal convective situations the there is always a velocity of the flow either the flow is uh, there is a velocity of the flow or in this case there is a velocity of the plane because convection is relative velocity. Whenever there is relative velocity therefore, that is in convection the correct driving temperature potential is this and not simply the temperature difference that you see on paper. Therefore, for all convection cases the first thing that you have to do is calculate T A W even if it is not a adiabatic case that is the right temperature. The moment there is u 1 there the question is u 1 square by 2 C p is there it is may be small large very large that is a different matter, but it is there u 1 is not 0. The moment u 1 has come into the picture where is a quiet flow and then you go to the boundary layer flow there is a kinetic energy there is a viscosity therefore, there is a viscous dissipation. The question is is it important how important now if when you do not know what it is what you should do is take this expression for calculation. If that you have understood the next question is how do I get the T adiabatic wall temperature. Go one step ahead now look at this T adiabatic now is equal to what is it Prandtl u 1 T 1 plus okay. T 1 plus we will make a small again manipulation here eh? bring T 1 to the left hand side. So, T A W 
minus t1 divide by u1 square by 2 cp. Can you tell me what it was now that you have done the high velocity flow, you have done the high velocity plate, Ar Ar Arvind? Yeah. yeah. What is this term in high velocity flow? Huh? Now what is it called? I will I will put a symbol for this, tell me. In high velocity flow, you got a very similar expression. You already knew about the added value wall temperature earlier actually. T A W minus T 1 divided by U 1 square by 2 C P. I will give you a hint. Before I left in the last class, I said can you compare the quiet flow to something else which you are which you know uh, what, uh, that is a boundary layer flow, is not it. Now, what is T 1 corresponding to then? In boundary layer flow, what does T 1 correspond to? And u 1 corresponds to? So, suppose you put T A w minus T infinity here, u infinity by 2 C p. Now, do you recollect what it was? Hmm? No, that is h by rho infinity C p. Yeah, look into the notes if you have. I want you to give me the name of this term. Maybe you are more familiar with that flat plate problem. Therefore, in this I am replacing T1 by T infinity, U1 by U infinity, that is a boundary layer problem. It is that the, the, the way of looking at it is right, but the what you get on the right hand side will be different. But what is this term called? T A W minus T infinity divided by U infinity squared by 2 C P. Please point out uniformity by 2 Cp is a temperature term, therefore it is non-dimensional. <coughs> you want me to give you a hint beyond that? You do not have the notes, earlier notes. High velocity boundary air flow with air. Ah, what is it called? Now, you thought recovery factor was only in high, high velocity boundary layer flow. Now, I am giving the recovery factor in a simple quiet flow, which you have solved by hand. Complete set of Navier Stokes equations is not a boundary layer flow, it is a parallel flow. You took uh, the governing energy equation. Including a term which you did not, you did not know what it was, but du by du whole square, you, it did not cancel out. So, you took that into consideration. Then, when you take the temperature profile and put the various boundary conditions, you are getting so much of information. First thing you got was a cut number. Then, we know now there is a heat reversal at the wall, even though T1 is greater than the bottom temperature, that is because of viscous generation. And there is therefore some critical value where viscous heat comes into picture that you found out you should find out plant like heat equal to, to 2 by dt by dy at uh, that uh, equal to 0. Now, you go one step beyond you find that the non adiabatic case the bottom wall temperature is something which is very similar for which you need a temperature from a insulated boundary condition which is the insulated or adiabatic wall temperature. So, you take the adiabatic wall temperature term put it into the non adiabatic thing that is the right driving equation for convection is what I am now trying to tell you. And now, go if you go further. Now, uh, uh, yeah, I asked you T infinity unit, now I will come back to T A W minus T 1, because it is a quiet flow situation, there is no infinity here. This is called the recovery factor and what is the recovery factor in this case? This is equal to from this expression. So much comes out of this problem, you know. Why is it called recovery factor? <coughs> recovery factor is recording something. Something is being recorded. What is being recovered? You can guess. Huh? Uh, don't say heat loss. 
the heat that is generated by viscous dissipation that is being recovered. In the case of the adiabatic wall, where is it being recovered? If you see, it is going to the. Ah, by the way, what is the max? I'll just go back. What is the maximum temperature in the adiabatic case, and where does it occur? I think I've asked you this question. In the, where is the adiabatic temperature? Uh, maximum temperature. Where does it occur? You know the T1, T0 profile you have drawn. So max T1, T0 is held constant, so nothing can happen. The maximum temperature occurred in the fluid. T1 equal to T0, same thing. T max occurs in the fluid at y equal to L by 2. In the adiabatic case, which is the maximum temperature? Where? Yeah, yeah, at the wall itself. Yeah. So draw the profile at y equal to z. That is the maximum temperature. How it has come about? Some of the heat that is generated is been recorded at the plate. This may or may not be the very right physical interpretation, but this gives you an idea. The heat that was generated by friction has been recovered by the system itself. It has not let it go as a loss. If it is a loss, well, still the insulated surface would have some temperature, maybe it is slightly lower. But when it has recovered, taken the heat and separate part of it. In insulated case, there is no heat loss from the plate, dt by dy is zero. But at that point, whatever it has absorbed, it has raised its temperature. So, in an insulated boundary conditions case, the insulated plate temperature is the highest, and therefore you can draw the profile. I want all of you to draw the coet uh, flow, draw the profiles for T1 greater than T0 case, T1 equal to T0 case, and the adiabatic case. See the temperature profiles, how they change. Now, now you go beyond that. <coughs> so, so we are saying here the frictional heat is being recovered, therefore it is a recovery factor. Now, we will go to the next step. So, what is the recovery factor equal to? Can you tell me from your notes what was the recovery factor for that particular case that you? So, what is the value of the recovery factor for the high velocity laminar boundary layer flow? Whatever you have done, laminar or turbulent, laminar, I think. <coughs> that R value, what is it? <coughs> you got the R somewhere there in your notes? Huh? So, R there should be a relationship r equal to what suppose i want to calculate you got uh, um, t a w minus t infinity divided by infinity is by 2 c p equal to r that r equal to what for that particular situation i'm sure you have that value there your notes What will uh, in in terms of what you will find the value of R at least? No, you must have you, you must have <coughs> written it down. You got the definition of R in your class notes? Come on, I shouldn't be asking you so many questions here. Yeah? You said recovery factor, fine. So there is an expression for recovery factor. I'm asking you what is the value of that in that particular case? The laminar flow flat plate case. Find out it should be there. We will go further. I wanted to bring the point here that R is a function of Prandtl number only in terms of number, but it changes from situation to situation in terms of the geometry and the flow. So, a flat plate laminar problem has a certain recovery factor, is a function of Prandtl number. A laminar, uh, sorry, a flat plate turbulent flow has its own recovery factor, which is a function of Prandtl number. A coet flow, <coughs> we didn't specify the fluid here, but fluid is the Prandtl number. So for the coet flow, the recovery factor. It doesn't matter whether it's adiabatic or non. That's not the point at all. Recovery factor value is equal to Prandtl. So if you know the Prandtl number. Half the solution is known. Now, I do not know whether you have missed for laminar boundary layer, it should be a Prandtl power half or something. 
laminar, high velocity. No, no, you, you have missed it. You should be there, somewhere there. You should be square root of plant number. This is very important for us to know that the recovery factor has a value which is some factor, uh, 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 I, I do not want to say function, yeah, okay. Function of Prandtl number, Prandtl power 1 half root 1 third or whatever. In the case of quiet flow, it is equal to Prandtl number, that is all. For high velocity laminar boundary flow with air, it is I think Prandtl power half, you please check. For turbulent flow, it will be Prandtl 1 third, I think, please check it out. This is very important, two aspects. One, you should know that recovery factor is a function of Prandtl number and also how much it is, because one is a physical signal by recovery. Now, so tell me when you want to solve a problem for your, how does this help you, this expression? What is it that you know? What is it that you do, do not know in this expression? This is expression to calculate the adiabatic wall temperature, because you always know the fluid. Is there air or uh, for us, you know, air or oil? It could be water, it does not matter at all. So, the moment you know what is the fluid, of course, you know the plate velocity, this is given plate velocity, plate temperature, T A W is known. The moment T A W is known, you go to the heat transfer equation. Do not simply put T naught minus T 1, that is what I am trying to convey to you. Same thing in the case of laminar boundary layer flow, usually what is the uh, Newton's law of cooling Q is equal to H A delta T, delta T is T W minus T infinity, I am saying do not do that. Take T W minus T adiabatic, you do not have to worry. Now, T adiabatic has U 1 squared, all it simply means is if U 1 is small this is negligible, if U 1 is considerable that will be important. It could be a rise of point not not 1 degree centigrade when U 1 is small, but it is there. You may, you may neglect it, but it can never be 0. <coughs> Viscous dissipation is 0 only when u1 equal to 0, but then we do not talk about convection at all in this case. So, the moment there is a u1 that is coming into picture, fluid velocity, there is kinetic energy, there is a viscosity, there is a velocity gradient, therefore, mu du by dy whole square becomes important. That comes from tau w equal to mu du by dy. So, viscous shear leads to heat generation heat generation heats up the fluid and the temperatures in the fluid will be slightly higher than what actually the T infinity, but it may be negligible. If T infinity is 150 degrees centigrade and the viscous dissipation has increased at 0.1 degree, you do not care, but if T 1 is 150 degrees centigrade and viscous dissipation has increased by 40 degrees centigrade. Now, on what does that mat, uh, depend either 0.1 or 40? Two things: Prandtl number, the fluid, and the velocity gradient. How Eckert number, Prandtl Eckert number. So, when we want to calculate the rate of heat transfer in convection, in any situation, this is an example. The same thing you can do in the laminar. Here, it very clearly says, "Don't worry about what U1 and T1 are. There, get the adiabatic wall temperature. Use this expression. T naught is actually T W in a way." Our, our old thing and immediately you have the heat transfer coming into picture. So, we do this squared flow generally um, as in the beginning of the laminar flows. We never said laminar, uh, we did not say turbulent because it is all for laminar. We wrote the expressions for laminar. We do this therefore, to, con, uh, to first of all understand the procedure of uh, solution of a convective heat transfer problem. Starting from the physical model, I will never, I, I, I say this very often, you have to start with the physical model, ad nausea as I say, physical model, mathematical model, simplification of the equations if they are very complex and neither equations are complex. Then take the simplified version, so in a boundary layer flow it can be Prandtl equations, but in this case there is no name given to those four equations, you know d w, d square u by d y, what name, there is no name, but you please look at them. It is like <coughs> in conduction, what is the simplest uh, expression for conduction? d square d by d y square equal to 0, you cannot get anything simpler than that with two boundary conditions. 
Similarly, you have here d square u by dy square equal to 0, dw by dy square equal to 0, y momentum has taken care of uh, taken care, energy equation we wrote everything, we said there is no heat generation. So, we, we did not say there is no viscous dissipation purposely, so that we wanted to study because it has du by du. Now, in this after that you have to solve, you do not have to rush to the computer big fluent code, you can do it by hand, this is the only problem and the corresponding positive Fozoa problem which you can do by hand with three different boundary conditions T 1 greater than 0, T 1 equal to T 0 I want you to do that and a boundary condition at the uh, insulated boundary condition you get different different temperature profiles, but importantly you find lot of physics the effect of viscous dissipation the, the, the possibility that the heat transfer can go to a temperature which is higher than the other temperature in the system simply because the fluid has increased temperature. A practical application in lubrications or any, anywhere where oil is involved as a lubricant, it loses its viscosity at this higher temperature that is the important thing. So, you have to find out what is the that is why the gaps are given as 3 mm, 4 mm you know otherwise you know it is not it is not a duct kind of a thing. And then you come uh, the new non dimensional term which is the Eckert number which you never thought you would do that you did not say it is a high velocity problem, but it came in Eckert number. Then when you temperature profiles were drawn you got the heat reversal, then you go to the adiabatic wall temperature there you find you can get adiabatic wall temperature expression, but that is exactly is what appears in the non adiabatic case. Therefore, in the non adiabatic case even for you to calculate the heat transfer first calculate the adiabatic wall temperature that can be obtained through the definition of a recovery factor which is nothing but T A W minus T 1 by T 1 square by 2 C P which is a recovery factor. In this particular case it has a definite value which is equal to the Prandtl number, if it is oil it is 1000, if it is air it is 0 0.72 and immediately you know the effects will not be very high in the case of air, but it will be extremely high in the case of oil. There itself the Prandtl number effect is simply uh, hitting you in the eye actually. And therefore, when you want to find out the rate of heat transfer in any convection problem you say right thing to do fundamental is calculate the adiabatic wall temperature which is non existent which is an imaginary thing it is as if there is a adiabatic wall temperature there is no adiabatic wall temperature in your normal uh, our cases this, this is very important for you to understand because the students will always ask sir why do we calculate the adiabatic wall temperature there is no it simply so happens the physics tells you when you have this non adiabatic equation there is a term which is nothing but the adiabatic wall temperature. So, you say there is an imaginary adiabatic wall temperature, imaginary temperature which is equal to adiabatic wall. Once you put that in, that is the right equation for heat transfer, and that is a function of Prandtl number which comes to a recovery factor. Recovery simply means the frictional heat that is being generated is being recovered as much as possible within the system, that is all it means. So, for you to solve this problem for rate heat transfer in all convection system, get the adiabatic wall temperature through the Recovery factor, which is simply a function of Prandtl number, we can actually plot all this, you know, as a function of Prandtl and R for various uh, flows, and go back and calculate the rate of All these new ideas, physics of the problem, how to solve the convection equation, how to uh, put in the boundary condition, and actually solve. Now, if you take a complex Navier-Stokes equation, you won't do this. You'll go to a code that you won't know how it is done. You have now integrated every equation, uh, the temperature equation twice every time to get the two constants depending upon the two boundary conditions. So, the whole thing about convection is encapsulated in this squared problem. If you know this comp problem completely, you can play with any equation, even if you go to the code, at least you know what is happening. How did this come about? How did the uh, rate of heat transfer calculated? Q is equal to minus k dt by dy. That is why in the beginning stage I said physics wise I want for my heat transfer dt by dy at y equal to 0. For me to get that I have to have the entire temperature profile, for you to have the temperature profile you have to have the energy equation along with the boundary conditions and that comes from nature which is the first law of thermodynamics. So, from nature to rate of heat transfer in an adiabatic or a non adiabatic situation you can understand provided you actually do the calculations by hand not by a computer, put plant record various values, plot it. Earlier we used to have these graph sheets on which we used to plot and as the plot we are plotting the whole thing comes visually, do not you do not have to accept uh, what I say or what the computer says, you do it by hand this is the only problem which you can do by hand and see the solution as I say coming out 
because of you, you are churning all the information, mathematical information, physics information, you integrate these together to calculate the rate of it.